Good morning, Tahal Kadosh. Beruchim Abayim to everyone today, Wednesday, the 27th day of Menachem Ab, corresponding to the 24th day of August 2022. Today's class graciously sponsored by Eli and Sarah Levy, Le'ilui Nishmat, her beloved grandparents, Sarah Batiafa and Moshe Ben Yafa Halevi. Additionally, today's class graciously sponsored by Mrs. Razel Gamborg, Le'ilui Nishmat, her beloved grandmother, Le'ah Buberman Bat Sarah. He that to the words of Torah that the Shamot have an aliyah in Ben Eden. Amen. It's good to be back. I miss each and every one of you, and I believe that you miss me. At least some of you miss me. Uh, but it's good to be back. It's good to be back. Thank you. It's good to be back. And uh, we say thank you also to the virtual audience from itorah.com for uh, patiently waiting for my arrival back. You know, we say every day in our daily prayers, There are many thoughts in the mind, in the heart of the person. And the ways of Hashem always will prevail. And this is something that I saw uh, during my unexpected absence. As you know, I was supposed to be back a week earlier. Ban Borea Olam says, don't go back to Miami yet. I need you in New York to fulfill a couple of missions. Although I tried to escape some of them, but I wasn't able to do so. But Baruch Hashem, I'm happy uh, to be back with the dear Kahal Kadosh. One of the topics that we discussed in the earlier class today was the famous Gemara in Masechet Shevuot that discusses connected to this week's Perasha, Perasha Tre'e. As we know, Perasha Tre'e. Of Chole Shelul, as we know, and it was announced last Shabbat, or Chole Shelul, Ava Alenu Letova, will be this Shabbat and Sunday. That means that Monday we begin with Serihor. So you're welcome to come 5 20 or 7 a.m., followed by Shaharit Minyan, breakfast and classes. According to the great Mohed Kol Hai, he says the word Re'e, Re'e Elul Higia. Look, the month of Elul arrived. So definitely the Abodah of the month of Elul and the messages of Elul, I suggest that we'll save them for Sunday. Once Sunday becomes the second day of Rosh Chodesh, we're going to start learning about the month of Elul, which always become fascinating lessons in Abodah Tashem. Uh, so let's concentrate in a particular a matter discussed from the week's uh, Gemara. But before we begin the class, we associate ourselves with the pain of Am Israel on the passing of the great Hacham Shalom Cohen, Zechrono uh, Libracha, Zecher Sadik Libracha, without any doubts, one of the greatest Sephardic giants of our generation who really. Uh, after the passing of Hakam Obadiah Yosef, he was put and appointed to be on the driver's seat of the leadership of Sephardic Jewry. And definitely a great loss for Am Israel. And when losses of this magnitude affect Am Israel, that is a requirement and a mandatory need from us to step up to the plate to enhance and to increase our Avodat Hashem. So let's see. What is the Gemara's suggestion based on this concept? The Gemara of today discusses the topic of promises, Nedarim and Shemuot. The Sephardic world recently did Hatarat Nedarim. According to the Syrian tradition, that is done on Mosa'e Shabbat, but the many communities in the world, they do it actually 40 days before Rosh Hashanah. The next one will be Erev Rosh Hashanah. The second one will be Erev Kippur. The Zohar Kadosh explains the need of making the Hatarat Nedarim. The Zohar says, Kola Noder Neder. 
a person that makes a promise, a person that makes a vow, velo me kayemo, and the person makes the promise, but the person does not fulfill that promise, ni dui al ba'im yom. His tefillot are in suspense for 40 days. That's the meaning of the word ni dui. Ni dui cancel lashon ni da. Yani excommunicating. Why? Zora Kadosh explains that the words of the person's mouth are not stab words that a person speaks. The words that we speak carry kedusha, carry power, and is the way that Hashem created the world. Bilbar Hashem Shamai Naasu. Hashem created the world through the power of speech. Look in Perasha Bereshit. Bayomer Elohim Yehi Or. Bayhi Or. Hashem spoke. And the matter became created. In our daily prayers, Baruch Omer Be'ose. What's the meaning of this Pasuk? Baruch Omer Be'ose. This Pasuk has two meanings. The first meaning is towards Akadosh Baruch Hu. But you know the second meaning is towards us. Baruch Omer Be'ose. Blessed be the person who says and fulfills and Oh, and, and observes and actually delivers the verbal commitment. You know, in Arabic they say, Haki Balash. Talk is cheap. Talk is not cheap. Whoever told you that is lying to you. Talk is very expensive. Call, talk comes with a price tag. If the words and the statement is good, it's positive, it's clean, it's holy, Hazako but if God forbid is the opposite, now we have an open invoice. We have an open invoice. And that's why the Gemara writes, according to the Pasuk of the Perasha, Mosa Sefatecha Perashat Matot, and many other Perashitot, Mosa Sefatecha Tishmor Be'asita. If something came out of your mouth, that's your bond. You don't need to sign a document. You said, fulfill. But it's imperative to clarify that the Hatarat Nedarim that we did 10 days ago doesn't really cover a real nether that a person made. What does it mean? Let's say that a person made a promise. I promise, I'm not promising, okay? Just in case, for the record. I'm not promising. But let's say a person makes a promise to pray every day next. By the third day, if you did not fulfill that commitment, you are transgressing an avon from the Torah. <coughs> or if a person promises, from now on, I'm only going to do Rabbeinu which is beautiful. But by the second week, you can't. So what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to make Hatarat Nedari. You're supposed to convene a group of three rabbis. To one of them, you have to tell them what is the nether that you made. And the rabbi will find a petah. A petah means an opening. I don't want to say a loophole. It's not a loophole. It's an opening. An opening to see if your nether was conditional or your nether was not conditional. This reminds me of a story that happened to me personally maybe 25 years ago. A lady calls me up. Rabbi, emergency. What happens today if you call a doctor's office? If this is a medical emergency, hang up and dial 911. Or in the Jewish hotline, call Hatzalah, whatever. But back then in the day, Hatzalah in South Florida didn't exist. And we never never thought of that message. Usually, in the olden days, you pick up the phone to call. Hopefully, somebody will answer. So I said, is this a medical emergency? 
No, 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 Baruch Hashem, all is well. So tell me, what's the emergency? So she tells me that she made a promise to a rabbi that she went to get a beracha for, that from now on, she will only eat kasher. Only kasher. And she needed to make hatarat nedarim to change the nether. The nether, the new nether will be, I eat kasher at home, but on the street I eat whatever I want. So respectfully and tactfully, I said to this wonderful person, as much as I'm trying to help you, I cannot nullify a nether from the Torah. In other words, they are optional, they are optional nedarim. Let's say that a person makes a nether and he says, every Friday, I'm going to give a hundred dollars in tzedakah. That is beautiful. That is very generous. But that's not an obligation. You don't have to give every Friday before candle lighting a hundred dollars in charity. You want to give one dollar, you also fulfill the mitzvah of giving tzedakah. You give a few coins, you fulfill the mitzvah. But that mitzvah is optional. But there is no optional when it comes to mitzvot from the Torah. Because we made a Shavua, as the Balatanya brings a Gemara from Masechet Nida, Mashbi'in Oto, Tehi Sadiq Be'al Tehi Rasha. Before a person is born into the world, we swear, literally, Mashbi'in, we make a vow. I swear that I will become a righteous person. I will observe the misvot. So I talked to her and I said, I cannot cancel that type of promise. Because even without that promise, you are obligated from the Torah to eat kasher. After a few minutes back and forth, Baruch Hashem, she accepted and understood. And I believe till the last day of her life, uh, she only ate kasher. Baruch Hashem is her zakhut, not me. I just helped her alachically, and that gave me a door to say a few more uh, insights to, to make sure that we don't lose a customer. Because sometimes, due to the lack of knowledge, many times people will tell, my home is kosher. So that is a catch-22 answer. So does it mean that outside of your home is not kasher? And that affects, yesterday we learned the concept of timtum halev behamoah. In English means timtum halev. The Torah writes, menit metem bam. The Torah in Berashat Shemini talks about the loss of kashrut. That how kashrut, like it or not, affects the person. Affects the person in a physical way and affects the person in a spiritual way. And our hachamim tell us very clearly that sometimes sefekot of emunah, God forbid, that a person has doubts in emunah, or God forbid, the emunah of the person is shaky. You know what they tell you to do? Reinforce two areas of your life. Can you guess one of them at least? Kashrut. Can you guess the second one? It's heavy. Think. Berit is important. Berit is important. All the misvot, Shabbat, Berit, your mouth are connected to the covenant with a Kadosh Baruch Hu. That's why Shabbat it's called an oath, a covenant. Berit, protection, obviously. Berit, it's also a covenant. The berit milah of the mouth, it affects the milah of the person's area. What comes out of your mouth? Words. How do you say words in Hebrew? Milah. Milah, milah. Milah, milah. 
Mila, Mila. The words that come out, it has a spiritual ashpa'a on the person. There is one more, but maybe for today we'll save it. But I'm going to give it to you. Because you, you are telling me, please, Rabbi, tell me. A bonus round. You'll be shocked at the answer. You ready? Put on your seatbelts and your bulletproof vest. Mai Maharari. Mai Maharari. Of course, is there a banan? But why do you say Hoba in Mai Maharari? You don't say an Ahatafilin Hoba. You say Mai Maharari Hoba. Why? Hoba means an obligation. Latzet yede hoba. I fulfill my halachic obligation. Why don't I say putting on tefillin is mandatory? It's obviously that it's mandatory. So then your question would be why my emuna is affected if I don't do my maharami? <clears throat> Everybody does Birkat Amazon, right? Birkat Amazon is what I say from the Torah, a positive commandment of the Torah. The foundation of Parnassah and Beracha in the home is determined on the Birkat Amazon. The Lacha writes, the person who recites Birkat Amazon from the book, not by heart, from the book, and has the proper behavior during Birkat Amazon, which the Benish Hai calls the Birkat Amazon, the sitting Amida. Amida is here, Birkat Amazon is here. Because Amida is not from the Torah. Amida is by Hachamim. What I'm trying to say is, God forbid, I'm not minimizing the power of the Amida. But if you put Amida and Birkat Amazon next to each other, Birkat Amazon. Sure, it's from the Torah. Or Aida. So then we have the Mai Maharanim. It says in the Etra Tzon, quoting the Kedushat Levi, the famous Levi Levi's Hakon Bardicho. He says that Emunah in Hashem is connected to Emunah Hachamim. We learn it from Moshe Rabbeinu. Bayaminu ba Hashem, u Moshe Abdo. The Torah puts Emunah to Hashem, Emunah to Moshe Rabbeinu. So the moment that a person does my Maharonim, which we all know, the washing of the fingertips before Birkat Amazon, we are fulfilling the mitzvah of Emunat Hachamim. And if the mitzvah of Emunat Hachamim is fulfilled, we are in the right track to have Emunah in a Kadosh Baruch. Echaim. Echaim. This is tea, relax. <laughs> no alcohol. Baruch Hashem, alcohol and I don't have a good relationship. That's good. Only Shabbat, because it's a halachic requirement to make Kiddush on wine. But Baruch Hashem, I'll see alcohol across the street. It's not good. Baruch Hashem. There are those who are mahmir, and they go on a date every day. That's a problem, Allah. And spiritually and morally, but that's a different show. So let's go back again to the topic of Shavuot, or Nedarim. So the Hatarat Nedarim before the holidays, it's a just-in-case Hatarat. If a person did make an actual nether or shebu'ah, he needs to convene a beddin to say to one of the hachamim what was the nether for, and the rabbi will determine if it's a nether that can be <coughs> nullified. Obviously, if it's a mitzvah from the Torah, as I said before, there is no hatara for that. But the summary of the Torah, of the Gemara, is, as I said in the beginning of the class, 
even though the words come from you, but remember what Sefer Hasidim says, as long as the words stay inside of me, I'm in charge. I'm in the driver's seat of my life. The moment that the words come out, I become the heaven of my words. So <laughs> someone asked a question earlier today. What about when you go up to the Sefer Torah? You go up to the Sefer, and we do the Mishabirah, and I, you know, Babushim in the Dev, and in some synagogues, they say Belineder. Babushim in the Dev, Belineder. Now, let's clarify this Belineder. Obviously, throughout life, we invoke the word Belineder. Some of us, the way we talk, the way the Shalaha Kadosh writes, Alpi Hashem is O, Alpi Hashem Yahanu. Alpi Hashem, it says the Shalah Kadosh, that you talk with God in your mouth. That's why many people say, Be'ezrat Hashem, God willing. Imir say Hashem, also God willing. Be'ezrat Hashem means with the help of God. Our good friends from Mexico, how do they say? Primero Dios. You're from Mexico? Elias, can you confirm that? Primero Dios. What does that mean, Primero Dios? First God. Then my commitment to you. It's a beautiful way of speaking. In Spanish, we also say, si Dios quiere, if God wants. That's what the Shalah Kadosh writes. Al pi Hashem, al pi Hashem. Always invoke God. Because once godliness is invoked by the way we speak, I speak different. I will not speak the way the world speaks. As a Yehudi, the Pasuk writes in the Navi, Israel asher becha et ba'ar. Israel asher becha et ba'ar. God takes pride on us. Imagine yourself that there was an argument and your friend said something. And guess what? You have a boomerang statement to tell him. And then you say, you know what? I'll be ashamed. I'm going to stay quiet. I'm not going to answer back because the yes and is an expert. And sometimes he brings this situation to bring the worst out of the person's essence. So the question that was asked is, what is the meaning of the belly nether when it comes to the Sefer Torah? So I will give you the guidelines when it comes to the Sefer Torah. Rule number one. Hazak. Rule number one, saying Beli Neder in the Aliyah doesn't exempt you of paying your donation. So what does the Beli Neder do? It buys you time. Why it doesn't exempt you of paying? I will tell you my answers. Number one, you're doing it in front of the Sefer. And that's how you make a shivua. When you make a vow, how do you make a vow? You put your hand on the sefer. How many times when people have arguments, the, the person tells you, I'm willing to put the hand on the sefer. Pongo la mano en el sefer. Te juro. Hasri Shalom, don't do that. Because if there is a percentage of not truth, you better have a prepaid plan. It's a Hilul Hashem. Hilul Hashem, the secretion of God's names, doesn't have a flexible payment plan. Averot, certain sins may have 
amnesty, delay effect. We wait. Hilul Hashem, blaspheming God's name or making a false Shemua, it goes under the banner of Hilul Hashem, desecration of God's names. And that, I don't want to finish the sentence. If you want to leave, don't do it. Do I need to be more clear? Good. I don't want to sound aggressive verbally, but it's imperative to understand that talk is not cheap. Talk is very expensive. Let's continue. So you have, first of all, the Sefer Torah in front of you. Then you have probably two witnesses in the Teba, the Baal Kore and the Somech, plus the Rabbi or the Gabbai, whoever makes the Mishaberah, you already have three Edim. Plus you have the whole Kahal who heard you. It's like the fellow who went up to the Sefer and uh, the Mesater says, Ba'usha bin Nadev, he says, a thousand for the synagogue. Good. A thousand for the Kolel. Hazaku A thousand for the Mikveh. Hazaku A thousand for the Pesach font. Hazaku A thousand for Niri price. Hazaku And for the Gabai, $26. At the end of the prayer, the Gabbai says, thank you, but everybody you gave a thousand, and to me you gave 26. He says, none of them will get paid, but you will get your $26. For <laughs> <laughs> That's of the Hakam of the Manishtana, or from the city of Helm, maybe. <clears throat> Hakam Balayla, as they say. The guy thought that it's funny, it's not funny. So what's the belly nether does for you. Short answer buys you time. The faster a nedavar is paid, the faster the beracha comes to the person. Another question was asked if you negotiate a payment plan. Let's say you bore Aliot, now Roshanan Kippur is coming and you spend $10,000 in Aliyot. If you want to spend more, I help you. I help you. Okay, Baruch Hashem. That's how the synagogue flourishes every day. You know, whatever you see daily and more. Actually, tomorrow we have a mega breakfast. And Friday, mega breakfast. So be ready. All right? This is the major league. When I say mega breakfast, means okay. with all the Hidurim. Beautiful. Come back. Anyways. Anyways, so we know that. Yeah, good, good answer. Azako Baru, good answer. Yeah. Anyways, Belinedra, of course. Now, imagine yourself, you come to the synagogue and you say, Madame Patrice, I bought a couple of Aliot. Do me a favor, take my credit card. I don't know what you have here, but you seem to have a lot of plastic here. Okay? Take my credit card and charge me, let's say, $500 a month for the next 10 months. Even though it exceeds the standard timing, the standard timing to pay donations is Shalosh Regalim. Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot. If you did it in Sukkot, you go to Pesach. If you did it in Pesach, you get to Sukkot. If you need to expand it, Allahically, you're allowed, as long as there is a agreement made. But I will tell you what not to do. Don't cry. Poverty. Don't cry. Poverty. Let's say that you did not go to the office to make a payment plan. You did not go. You tell the guy, bill me. Okay, the office sends you a bill, monthly, a statement. By the third month, or by the third statement, probably you will get a phone call. Not from the rabbi, 
Because if the rabbi calls, is to collect. <laughs> Not to say, okay, I'll pay you later, okay? But Baruch Hashem doesn't reach that level. Thank God. It's a beracha by itself. But the person says, you know what? Things are very difficult. Things are very rough. Whatever excuse the person gives, justifying why he is not paying. You know what Mu'ad Kol Hai brings the behind Palachi in the month of Elul. He says, "Settle your accounts with the college. Don't leave open invoices if you can, because like you clear your account." Hashem clears your account in Shabbai. But, he says, if you cry for no reason, when the office asks you, can you make some plan payment, and you give every reason under the sun, why not to do it? You know what behind Palachi writes? Shabbai at that moment, you know in Microsoft Word or in emails, you can do cut and paste, copy, cut, and paste, they take the entire conversation, which is typed, by the way, the Pasuk says, every conversation, every word, gets recorded. And I'm not talking about eavesdropping. I'm talking about Shamayim recording. Okay? You know what they do, says behind Palachi? I'm going to add my two cents. But he basically says, they take the sentence that says, I have difficult time now. They cut the sentence, the before and after. They take only, I'm having a difficult financial time. They take the sentence, they post it in your account in Shamayim, and they do a search. Mr. So-and-so states that he's having difficult financial times. It is true. And then suddenly says, credit card balance, zero. Mortgage, up to date. Bank account, X amount available. Money on the side, X amount available. Says the behind Palachi, remember the story of Tisha Ab. You cry for nothing, I'll give you, a reason. I'll give you, a reason you get a reason why to cry. This shiur is not about fundraising, by the way. But if you want to clear your account before the holidays, or make a payment plan, go to the office. We have operators standing by to take care of this. Rabotai, needless to say, that the topic of Nedarim and Shavuot not only carries the halachic binding from the Torah, but based on what we are learning, it seems to carry a huge level of responsibility in our life. For good, or God forbid, the opposite. Masechet Nedarim, Masechet Shavuot, no Shavuot, Shavuot, that has to do with the vows and the promises, etc. So I believe that the message of the Gemara of today, it's very uh, clear for each and every one of us. Let's go very quickly to the Birkat Amazon, that's the halacha of today. And we did speak about Birkat Amazon, and I'm going to say a Hiddush in the name of the Hafez Haim that I read in last week's Perashah. As we know, Perashat Ekev contains the Mizvah of Birkat Amazon, last week's Torah portion. Now, who composed Birkat Amazon? I know the Kahal Kadosh knows the answer. First Beracha Moshe Rabbeinu, second Beracha Yoshua Binun, third Beracha David and Shelomo, for centuries. Centuries means for 20, for 10, Maybe with the, with the distance of 900 to 1,000 years apart, 
Birkat Amazon had only three blessings after the destruction of the second Beta Mikdash, when it came to the unfortunate tragedy of Haruge Betar, the citizens of Betar that were killed by the Romans and their bodies were not allowed to be buried and the bodies were exposed for many, many years. Upon the passing of the emperor, this happened after the rebellion of Bar Kokhba, if you remember the history channel there. One day, this Roman emperor passed away. In the Roman Empire, they had an interesting law that all the decrees and edicts made by the previous emperor upon his passing, they get abolished and revoked. So when this emperor passed away, the remains of hundreds of thousands of Yehudim were able to be buried. And our Hachamim established Beracha number four of the Birkat Amazon, known as Atom Mehammetiv, God that is good and does good. God that is good, that the bodies were allowed to be buried after many years being exposed, and God that does good, that the remains did not decompose, which is a natural reaction, God forbid, when a body is not buried. And interesting enough, I have said this in the past, but I think it's relevant to the halakha of uh, today, that when a person drinks certain type of wine and certain halachic requirements are being met, we say an added beracha known as a tom behametiv. And the, and the wine only. And the reason why Hachamim added this extra blessing is because the miracles of the survival of the human remains were when Vespasianus was surrounding his vineyard with human remains of the Jewish people, God forbid. So if the miracle happened in the vineyard, let us remember the miracle of the vineyard every time we have an exquisite type of wine known as the Beracha of Hatov Behammetiv. But I ask you a question. This is based on the Hafez Haim of last week's Beracha. The Hafez Haim talks about the after the Beracha. After we say Hatov Behammetiv, we say Arahaman, 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 Uy Parnesero Bechavod, why did the Hachamim establish this extra curriculum prayer that has nothing to do in theory with the beginning of the of the Beracha? So you may say that because the Pasuk says are Haman the merciful one, the compassionate one. So Hashem display compassion and mercy upon the Haruge Betar. That is a good answer. But you know what the Hafez Haim says? That when a person orders a bakasha, a person requests something from Hashem, and that request is preceded by a mitzvah, chances of getting your answer increase tremendously. Where the Hafez Haim gets such a hidush? Because the Hafez Haim says on this same paragraph, it says, don't minimize the power of this Arahaman. Many times, Arahaman, 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 you have an opportunity to have your request answered. Answered. Besides the Amen. It says it's preceded by the Mizvah. And a request preceded by a Mizvah gets guaranteed delivery. 
where the Hafez Haim learns such a powerful Hiddush. I'm going to finish with a inviting a Rabbeinu Ha'ari. Rabbeinu Ha'ari, alayhi wa shalom, explains about a basuk in the book of Tehillim that says, Va'ani b'selek e'chezeh panecha. And I will see your face with sedek. What's the meaning of the word sedek? Usually sedek means justice or righteousness. But in this case, actually means sedaka. Rabbeinu Ari writes and it says, before you pray, give sedaka. You're not obligated. But it's a great suggestion that the Mitzvah of Sedaka paves the way for our prayers to be delivered. Guess what? For me, it's a great investment. It doesn't matter how much you give, but I want you to look around the synagogue and see how many people before Tefillah give some coins in the Sedaka. Like the Baal Shem Tov says, even the sound of the coins of tzedakah, it creates some reaction in Shammai. That doesn't mean don't give the $5 bill or the dollar bill into the kupa. <laughs> but do like I do sometimes. I come with a bill, I take some change, and I drop the coins inside. So I achieve both things. I gave tzedakah, and I make noise. And that's why, according to Kabbalistic writing, when we come to Baibarech David, what do we do? When we say, When we say, When we say, What is the prevailing Sephardic tradition? To give coins of Sedaka. Two and one. Two coins and one coin. And if you don't have a kupa, let's say you happen to be praying at the airport or in your home, or you could not come to shul, let's say, you're traveling, you couldn't make it. What do you do, says the Benishai? Take the three coins with your right hand and pass it over to the left hand. And it says that the coins represent the letter Yod, of Hashem's name, the Yod. The He represents the five fingers, the He, five. The, the right hand is the hand that gives. The left hand is like the hand of the poor that receives. So you have Yod, He, He. I'm missing the Vav. What is the Vav? Look at the shape of the Vav. The elbow that moves to give tzedakah. So with this motion, I'm formulating virtually yod ke vav ke. Now, the question is, what difference does it make if I give three coins together or if I give four coins? Why specifically the tradition tells us two and one. I can tell you that you can give more. Not a problem. The Mishai writes, Peruta, Peruta, Mistarefet. Every coin, every cent that we give to charity, after 120 years, we're going to check in. Okay, let me give you a receipt. Suddenly you have miles, you have points, 200,000 points. And you say, where does this come from? This is the savings account of every time you came to pray, every time somebody came to collect and you gave. It builds up. We don't have track of how much Siddhaka we give. Even for tax purposes, you know, you have credit card receipts, you have checks canceled, okay? So you more or less are able to assess uh, unless you keep a real, real meticulous accounting, which people do usually.
But I'll tell you one thing. Remember a famous colorful character by the name of Esam? Remember him? The brother of Yaakov, our uncle. Our uncle. Our uncle. Uncle Esam. Okay? The Torah tells us overall that Esam was a very colorful, challenging, problematic fellow. A troublemaker, Bekitsur. But there was one moment in his life that he did something good. He cried. He cried when he realized that Yaakov Avinu took away the Beracha from him. The Pasuk says by Isaac, Se'aka Gedola Umara. He uttered a very loud and bitter screaming. In English, I use a lot of words. But in Shamaim, they took three words. Se'aka Gedola Umara. Fast forward, Megillat Esther. When Mordechai Sadiq becomes aware of the decree of Haman and Ahasuerus, what the pasuk there says about Mordechai? Se'aka Gedola Umara. Same language, I believe, is brought down in the Mefarshim on Masech and Megillah. The sound of the crying of Esam was lingering throughout the world till Mordechai Sadiq came and he uttered the same scream, same words, according to the Hachamim of the Kabbalah, the crying of Mordechai took care of part of the tikkun of Esam. You know how the remaining tikkun is being made? When we give the money in Baibarech David, Beata Moshe Bakol, Se'aka Gedola Umara. And that's why we give coins. I repeat, don't be cheap. Give dollar bills. And then take three coins from the kupa and drop them inside. Two and one. Unbelievable. With just a mere action of giving a few cents in tzedakah, we creating a revolution in Shabbat, quieting down the pending open invoice of Isab for crying one time. Because Isab, I'm not sure if there are enough words in the vocabulary to describe Isab. But we're not here to put down Isaac. Has Shalom. That's not the intention. But yet, there was a moment that the emet came from his heart. My dear friends, it's good to be back. Thank you today to the generous sponsors. And by Zat Hashem, we'll see you a bit later. Amen. Amen. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen. Amen. Rabbi Hananiah, Benakashi, Omer, Ratzah, Kadosh Baruch Hu, Lezakot, את ישראל לפי חכירה